What is up everyone, my name is Jack Southall, back again with another video and I'm here today with my WWE Monday Night Raw review for May the 23rd, 2016. So let's not muck around, let's get straight into this. So um, we opened up the show with um, Seth, Seth Rollins coming out, this is his first Raw appearance since October or November of um, 2015. And um, you hear a welcome back chant and all that, and it looks like Rollins is going to say, you know, oh yeah, I read all of your letters and all the messages you received, and you know what I did with them? I burnt them to the ground, so I thought that was pretty funny, the whole like kind of turning thing that he did, which I kind of expected. I know there's a bit of controversy going around, you know, some people like that um, Rollins admitted to the fans, hey, you guys booed me when I was world champion, you called me the weakest WWE world heavyweight champion in history, and you think I forgot that? Hell no, screw all of you. And there's the other people who would be like, wait, wait, you got injured. The fans are ready to, you know, embrace you and all that. So why not you embrace the fans? Like, I can see both sides of that argument. Honestly, I'm kind of fine with Rollins being a heel. I don't see it as that bad of an issue. I, that, they can surely turn Rollins' um, face in the future. You know, they don't need to have everything happen right now. Um, they are going to do it. They, you know, they have to do it this year. Um, but then after he just took a massive shit all over the fans, the big top dog Roman Reigns comes out and um, stares at him. And then immediately Rollins rolls out of the ring, which I just went, oh, we don't want to see another chicken shit heel again, please. However, Shane McMahon comes out to announce the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match between Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. So now it is official. And, um, of course, Rollins is more than happy about that. And, um, yeah, so we're definitely getting, getting uh, Ro Roman Reigns versus uh, Seth Rollins, the match we should have seen at Survivor Series. So, yeah, I think, like, that could be a really interesting uh, matchup. I think these two guys can absolutely kill it. Um, but, yeah, I do believe also that um, this feud can be very, very good in the next coming weeks. So... Um, we'll talk about some of the Money in the Bank qualifying matches for tonight. The first one we'll talk about here is Sheamus versus Sami Zayn. And um, he pretty much makes um, fun of Sami Zayn, saying the state of him. P trying to rip off um, V1 from OSW Review there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we had the Sami Zayn-Sheamus match. Um, it was an okay match. And there was a lot of back and forth action between these guys. However, Sami Zayn ended up hitting the Aluva kick to pick up the win. And let's just say Sheamus is not happy. He um, he just walks off, just thinking to himself, oh, what have I done? You know, it's admitting he effed up. And then um, after the break, we have a Apollo Crews um, backstage interview with Renee Young. And um, he pretty much talks about um, his upcoming match with Chris Jericho because he's going to be in the Money in Bank qualifier. And um, he talks about the punishment. He talks about Extreme Rules. It's going to be the biggest match of his career. That is until Sheamus attacks him from behind, beats the shit out of him, and is pretty much going crazy about the whole new era, and he's pissed off about it, and then he walks off. So we could be seeing a Sheamus versus Apollo Crews feud, which I'm all down for. It gives something to do for Apollo Crews, and I hope it elevates him to something new. So um, we then get the new day coming out um, <clears throat> with a birthday cake that says happy birthday and they ask why um, there is a cake in the ring and they say because Monday Night Raw has gone for 1,200 episodes it's going more than 23 years old and then um, Biggie and Xavier is like oh there's a you, we all know that a cake's not a safe place in the WWE could you imagine if it was to fall on someone and they tease on a little kid on JBL Byron Saxon which I thought was pretty funny but of course, the fucking social outcast, without Adam Rose, he has been officially released from WWE because he had a domestic violence thing and all that, which is not very good. I hope he gets his shit sorted. Um, so yeah, Bo Dallas, Heath Slater, and Curtis Axel beat up the New Day, and we have a six-man tag team match. Pretty standard stuff. Um, there was a um, Bo train going around, but Slater fell on his face. Um, which was pretty funny. And then Woods um, did a um, sunset flip, whatever, over the top rope. And uh, Kofi and Biggie hit the double team to get the win. And then right afterwards, they um, grabbed the cake 
and they slam it in Slater's face. And um, there was a really cool bit where like Biggie got a bit of cake and just smacked it in Heath Slater's face, which is pretty funny. So um, yeah, nice to see a new day in, and could we be seeing a new day social outcast feud? We'll just have to wait and see. Um, then we've got another qualifying match between Cesaro and The Miz. Uh, very, very good match. Um, Cesaro was doing his uppercuts and so much awesome stuff. Miz was great in this um, and how it ended. Um, Cesaro blocked a skull-crushing finale. And um, then there was one bit where like, I think Cesaro was on top rope or he was near the rope and Miz drops him his bad arm over it and goes to the top. Um, he comes off, but he gets hit with an uppercut, neutralizer, Cesaro wins the match, really awesome to see. And then we get um, Renee Young talking to Seth Rollins backstage, and um, pretty much so Seth saying, you know, he's happy to be back or whatever, and um, he sees Stephanie, he goes in for a hug, but then she's like, you know, no, no, chill out, look, things have changed around here. And our business relationship has to change as well. We can't be as personal as we used to be. We've got to have to treat you like every other WWE superstar. So he offers him a handshake before um, she walks off. And Ron's just like, okay, what's up with that? So we could be seeing a face turn in the future. Because, you know, Ron's was really, you know, open with um, Stephanie McMahon. Because Stephanie has done a lot to help... Um, Rollins' future in the WWE and just, you know, with the whole authority and all that. So he's kind of, you know, dumbfounded. He's like, wait, why aren't you, you know, happy to see, see me and all that? So, yeah, I feel like the, if the rumors are true that a Seth Rollins versus Triple H match at SummerSlam is going to happen, I believe that's the first plant of what we're going to eventually see. Then we get um, Chris Jericho versus Apollo Crews, Money Bank qualifying match. And uh, Chris Jericho comes out and he's just covered in bandages after the um, thumbtacks at Extreme Rules the previous night. So, yeah, Apollo Crews showed how much of a great talent he is. Um, there was one bit where um, they kind of botched like a line salt spot here. I think Crews got, tried to get up when he went for the line salt, which kind of looked really sloppy. And um, he goes for the walls again. And Apollo Crews rolls him up for a two count. Then Jericho hits a code breaker and ends up entering the Money in the Bank ladder match. And then um, we get Renee Young backstage um, talking to Sheamus. He's like, okay, what's going on with you and Apollo Crews? He just laughs and pisses off. So, yeah, Sheamus has just gone crazy on this show, you know. Um, then we get another Darren Young and Bob Blackland segment. Sick. Um, then we get to... Uh, Jojo talking to Baron Corbin and um, his match against Dolph Ziggler at Extreme Rules. Now he couldn't care less about what people think of his win and, you know, Ziggler comes out and, you know, pretty much knocks him about his wrestling ability and Corbin says, hey, I didn't grow up watching WWE and I only came here so I can beat punks up like you. And um, Ziggler's like, you just wait. I have a match against Dean Ambrose, and I'm going to do something you can't do, and that's steal the show. So, uh, the feud between them keeps going on. Yay. Then we get uh, Big Cass versus Bubba Ray Dudley, and um, Big Cass, before he comes out, he announces it's like someone else is coming out with him. Guess who comes out? Enzo Amore is back. Yes, so happy. He is setting that mic on fire. And jeez, man, he pretty much says if he had a dime for every time he got knocked down and didn't get back up, he'd have zero dimes. Then he call out Dudley Boys, um, and he gave him like silly names, and um, that there's one word to describe him: S A W F T, soft. And so Big Cass takes on Bubba Ray Dudley, easily beats him, and yeah, so happy to see Enzo out. Ah, oh, just so awesome. Let's. Skip. Hopefully at Money in the Bank we see Big Cass and Enzo taking on the Dudley Boys. That'd be really awesome. Then we get to... Oh, God. <laughs> we get to the heel promo of the year. Jesus Christ. So, Ric Flair comes out to um, welcome Charlotte and Dana Brooke. And um, pretty much saying, you know, without Charlotte there is no Dana Brooke. Um, I think Dana said that. 
And so Charlotte wants to thank one person herself and that she couldn't be more proud of Dana because she made the right decision um, aligning herself with her. And then fans, um, Charlotte gets upset. Um, and then she tells Flair what she remembers growing up in holidays and birthdays. And um, she remembers her mum always saying, Daddy's with you, but he's never there. And he, she pretty much brings up how Rick was always on the road and barely ever got to see her. And then she just fucking unleashed on his poor father. And that she says, Flair knew what it like to be the man. Now she's the woman. And then she finally has the courage to tell her dad, get out of my ring and just be right to him. Just, oh my God. And she's like, oh, are you going to cry? Are you going to cry, Rick? And just Rick is just tears running down his face. And pretty much she is just, you know, belittling her own father and tells her, tells him to go get out of his ring, uh, get out of her ring. And so Rick does, tears in his eyes. Charlotte is just keep going, woo, <coughs> woo, and all that. Sorry, I couldn't do the woo properly. My throat's fucked up at the moment. Um, yeah, man, holy shit. Charlotte, you proved to me you are a fantastic heel. That was a great promo, you know. Charlotte, she's just the fucking savage, you know. Someone has to come up and just say to her, look, what you're doing is fucked up and wrong, and I'm going to kick your ass. I don't know if it's going to be Becky Lynch. I don't know if it's going to be Sasha Banks. I don't know who it is. You know, it could be anyone, you know. Um, but we're just going to have to wait and see. Who I want to see? Maybe Sasha, because, you know, sh she needs... Where the fuck has she been, honestly? We we miss Sasha, you know. Um, but, yeah, I just want to see something come out of this. Hopefully not another match with Natalia. <clears throat> um... We get another qualifying match between Dean Ambrose and Dolph Ziggler. And so um, Ambrose is still um, selling the effects of the Asylum match, which is pretty cool. These two have a really good match until um, Ambrose hits a dirty deed to get the win. Um, then we get Ric Flair walking backstage. Arn Anderson tells him, you know, I'm sorry, he's okay. Renee asks Flair, you know, what are your thoughts about what happened out there? Um, but Flair doesn't have anything to say. He's lost for words and just walks back. So um, then we get to the main event, AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens. Man, great match, absolutely great match. Love seeing these two together. And then um, one spot I do remember from this is that um, I remember I think AJ went from a knee to the face to the apron, and then Owens ended up catching AJ on the floor and power bombed him onto some steel steps on the outside, which is crazy. And um, Kevin Owens ended up getting the win with the pop-up powerbomb. Also, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, before this, um, AJ Styles cut a promo saying, you know what, I admit, I lost to Roman Reigns, he's the better man, I give him respect. And then Styles pretty much says, you know, Reigns still isn't phenomenal like he is, and that if it wasn't for the Usos, he would be World of White Champion, but you know, he doesn't live in the past. And then Gallows and Anderson come out, and that... Um, Anderson sounds like AJ didn't want them out there fighting last night and said he said from day one he wanted to do this on his own. This isn't Japan anymore. Things need to change. And then they all have words. And then, like, AJ says, you know what, guys, let's just, we need to go on our own separate ways and do our own things. But, you know, we can still be friends and all that. Um, Gallows and Anderson, they do not like that one bit. And they said, you know what, screw you. We're not even your friends anymore. We don't need you. We don't consider you a brother. And AJ, if that's the way it is, I don't want to be in the ring with you anymore. As of now, this is his ring, and then Anderson and Gallows just piss off. So, yeah, you know, planting the seeds for something involving AJ and um, Gallows and Anderson in the near future. Um, maybe this whole Finn Balor thing is going to happen, you know, um, after he does his NXT shit, he does make his debut onto the main roster, because when's um, the NXT event? I believe it is in... So yeah, the next um, event is NXT TakeOver Revenge, which is on June the 8th, so it's going to be before Money in the Bank. So um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting if um, Finn Balor could actually make his debut So um, at Money in the Bank when they have a match with like AJ Styles versus Luke Gallows or something. So we'll just have to 
wait and see. But yeah, this is how we're going to wrap up the show here. Uh, really good Raw. I really enjoyed it. Um, the stuff they did with um, Rollins was interesting. I know a lot of people can have conflicting thoughts on whether they want to keep Roman a heel or they should have turned him babyface. But you know, WWE, they always have enough time to do it. Um, but yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see um, what they do in the future because we can't just expect everything to be happen happening right now you know we gotta wait and see what actually happens until we can make a full judgment so yeah this is my review thank you guys for watching i hope you have enjoyed if you did make sure to leave a like comment down below what you thought of this episode whether anything that stood out to you um i did like the money in the bank qualifiers and charlotte's promo was the most savage promo i've heard in a while and, um, yeah, if you want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button. Uh, Twitter and Instagram is at JackManLaw31. Thank you so much for watching, and I am out in three, two, one.